Being a millionaire is not what it used to be. In fact, being a millionaire is almost the minimum you need to retire. So I'm here to teach you how to get beyond that. The good news is if you can learn how to create a million dollars of net worth, there's nothing stopping you from creating three million, five million, or even $10 million of net worth. In fact, they say the first million is the hardest. So in this video, I'll show you five mistakes to avoid on your way to becoming a millionaire. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share two massive mistakes I'm seeing investors make right now that could be catastrophic. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Teaching others how to create success via my YouTube channel and my education courses is so rewarding. But one of my favorite things inside of that is talking about the mistakes that I've made along the way because I think that many gurus or teachers are afraid to talk about their mistakes. They feel that it lessens their expertise and I disagree. I think anyone who has been a real estate investor or who has created a million dollars of net worth has made mistakes along the way. If I can help you avoid any of these mistakes, then I've done my job. And if you can do this faster than I did, which I believe is possible, that's a win-win as well. So let's dive in. Number five, not investing early. The sooner you get into the real estate market, the better off you're going to be. There's an expression in real estate that real estate is not about timing the market, it's about time in the market. Look at any city in the world and then look at real estate values 10 years ago versus what they are today. Almost all of them have increased in value because over time, real estate has proven to be one of the best, if not the best long-term investment. I started investing when I was 25 and I'm so glad that I did, but I know that many young people feel that they can't get into the real estate market because it's not affordable. This is no different than when I got started. It's all relative. Yes, real estate values were lower, but so were wages. Buying your first piece of real estate is always going to scare the crap out of you and it should, but don't let that fear stand in your way if you have the means. Don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. Number four, not reinvesting your profits. So you make some money on your first real estate transaction. Novice investors will take their winnings and blow that money. They'll get a nice car, they get a bigger house, or they go on an amazing vacation and then they're back to square one. I'm a multi-millionaire. I don't say that to impress you. I tell you this because if you look at my bank account, you might be a little shocked to see that I don't keep a lot of money sitting around. The moment that I make profit, I generally reinvest in another opportunity. This allows me to scale and grow my portfolio. Number three, relying on other people's advice. I can't tell you how many stories I hear on a regular basis about someone having a bad experience as a real estate investor. They have a bad tenant or they lost money on a real estate deal and now they want to tell the world about it. Even worse, they start giving advice to others on why they shouldn't be investing in real estate because they were not successful. I don't take advice from people who are not successful in an industry. I take advice from people who have created extreme success. If you want to play hockey in the NHL, you wouldn't take advice from someone whose highest level of hockey was beer league on a Friday night. But you definitely listen to Connor McDavid if he was willing to help you out. Treat real estate the same. Cut out the naysayers and start taking advice from proven professionals. Number two, not getting educated. Education is one of the keys to success as a real estate investor. Reading books, watching YouTube videos, taking courses, working with a mentor, and being part of a community are great ways to increase your education. Let me let you in on a secret. There's nothing new in real estate. Whatever you are trying to achieve has been done by somebody else, so go and learn from them. Sometimes you can get this information for free, but in my experience, at some point, you'll have to pay to play. The good news with real estate education is that your investment is usually recouped on your first real estate transaction, so don't let price be the deciding factor. Getting educated will allow you to grow faster and could potentially save you thousands by avoiding mistakes. And the number one mistake to avoid on your way to becoming a millionaire is to try to do it all alone. Teamwork makes the dream work. I'm not suggesting you have to go and partner with someone to be a millionaire. In fact, I would suggest the opposite unless a partnership truly allows you to build and scale faster. But you do wanna surround yourself with a team of people who can help you achieve your goals. Working with a great accountant, lawyer, mortgage agent, and an insurance broker will save you time and money. When you get to that point that you're ready to hire staff, such as a virtual assistant or an executive assistant, bring those people on as soon as you can. This will allow you to free up your time to focus on other cash flow generating opportunities. Going at it alone can also feel isolating and there's less accountability. So don't be afraid to build up a great team around you. 
As promised, I wanted to share two things I'm seeing investors do right now that are worrying me. The first thing is novice investors are still running pro formas with interest rates that are far too low. If you're running your numbers on a rental property, you should be using the stress test rates, not the current interest rates to see if your project makes sense. This way, if the interest rates continue to rise, as I believe they will, then you're protected. The second thing I'm seeing is a lack of cash flow in properties. A rental property should have positive cash flow no matter what. If you don't have cash flow in your properties, you're not an investor, you're a speculator because your only strategy is market appreciation. If you're banking on appreciation only as the way to make money and the market goes down and you have negative cash flow and interest rates rise, you're in big trouble. Use conservative estimates when you're analyzing deals and make sure that your property has cash flow to sustain you through the down times. If you have questions for me or you'd like to share a mistake that you made, drop those in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.